say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you, God, for me, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to his 
Oh, 
said, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his word, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Our text is the Old Testament lesson from the 51st chapter of Isaiah. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I have to start. It's almost like a cabinet chapel. I need to define words before we get in God's words. So in verse 4, there are two words. A law is actually a law which is not just commands and laws, but it's all of God revealing himself, including the gospel. The second word is justice. It's not the same as vengeance. It is a bigger concept. Setting all things right as it was in the beginning. And the Holy Spirit inspires Isaiah to take these two concepts and personify them into one person. Confusing. But yes, that's what he does. So in verse 6 it says, Lift your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath. The day is going to come when we realize what's being said with that word vanish. But today we say, oh, today's not the that, that day. But vanish means everything is gone. Everything in the whole Genesis creation package gone. It includes everything. All matter, space, time, and energy. Gone. We have no real concept of what gone is. That thing we threw away is gone in the trash can. Then the trash can ends up being, you know, picked up by the garbage truck. It's taken to the transfer station where it is incinerated, but never gone. Because our law says energy is neither created nor destroyed. Only transfer, never gone. But Torah has proceeded from him. Part of Torah means the soul that sins shall die and the ground is cursed because of you. Boy, we've seen things going down, going, going. But when this earth goes hollow and dry, like an ancient garment, then you just touch it and it disintegrates. When this world that seems so solid blows away like chaff, along with the people on it, along with all of our laws of science that turned out to be temporary also, we realize that day what God means. There's a difference between sky and nothing. A difference between air and nothing. A difference between space and nothing. A difference between time and nothing. That day when he reappears will make it plain. When we lift our eyes up to the heavens and we say, the day is not that day. And so we take another breath of his air, another glass of his water, and work and play on his hero for God and transfer his energy into more sin while we borrow more of his time and not listen and not give ear. We in the 21st century are without excuse. When we lift up our eyes to the heavens, even our temporary scientific theories Tell us how fragile these heavens are. Those who fancy themselves scientific types used to laugh at phrases in the Bible like the heavens are going to be rolled up. Yet, <coughs> we saw vast expanses of the heavens sucked into one of those black holes that God allowed us to discover by giving us telescopes. 
if we lift our eyes to the heavens, even with what little we know, we realize there could be a black hole big enough to suck up everything that exists. But there never will be. No matter how much time, no matter how much chance. Oops, wait a minute. Isn't that a sacrilege against religion of evolution? A thousand pardons. But every era of humanity is without excuse when it's time to look on the earth beneath. On the one hand, there is a stability to this earth that is in God's hands. And no mere human and no nation can ever alter it. But on the other hand, it is a frightening reality to look at how fragile it all is. We don't have to go through the whole arguments about climate change. It is fragile. While we sin and we run from him, how every orbit hurling us, every tide surging at us, every plate holding us up, every bit of atmosphere regulating our breathing and our cabin pressure, every asteroid that misses us, they're all held together by the same Torah that has gone out from him. We remember how Colossians says it. All things are held together in him. And yet, we still dare him to call our bluff on unbelief. And yet this world is wired for destruction. Watching this earth beneath tells us both the glorious power of God's creation and how much it has gone terribly wrong. How many worn out garments that used to be people we loved do we have to lay into the ground before the light goes on? Verse 4 says, I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. We recognize that much of his justice is only fair when the sin who sins shall die. But the vastness of his justice goes far beyond what our little finite brains deem as fair. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth. God shows that both of those are really the same. My salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be abolished. Both righteousness and salvation of God are paired as one. Righteousness and God's salvation are not commodities to be sought. They are a person. Give attention to me. Listen. Good news. All righteousness and God's salvation are seeking you. Righteousness and salvation are earned by a Jew from Nazareth whose name is salvation. What's the meaning of Jesus' name? The Lord's salvation, Yeshua, Jesus, all three. Torah. Yeah, righteousness and salvation are Jesus the Christ. And Jesus is the righteousness that is near. Jesus is the salvation that has gone forth, down from heaven, incarnate, to earn righteousness in a human body like ours, and to offer righteousness up to the Father on our behalf. Jesus is that revelation of God, that Torah, that proceeded from the Father, and his arms judged all of us in him. His arms were stretched out and nailed on our behalf. One has died for all, therefore all have died. On the cross that hung between heaven above and the earth beneath, forever the difference between a light to the peoples and vanishing 
like smoke. No one has to be vaporized like an old garment when this present age is swept away and Jesus reveals himself to us again. No one has to search for righteousness and salvation. Righteousness and salvation have come to us in a man, the same man who is God. He does the searching. And guess what? All of you are found. And for all of us who know we have been found, we spend our days worshiping this person. The gospel is about keeping awake and staying awake, staying active in God's church. How do we keep awake? How do we stay conscious for that experience while God runs out the clock on a contest already won? Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, by the way, that makes him a brother of Jesus, shows us how those who know that they are victorious live. You've heard it. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. That's an eight point job description. That's our job description. But every Christian cannot imagine fulfilling that job without stumbling. That's the reason. We are relieved to learn that righteousness and salvation are a gift in the person of Jesus the Christ. It's his performance that matters. And Jude comforts our fears with that person. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forever. <laughs> After all, when all is gone, it's just us and Him. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We rise and confess this God-given faith in the words of the night scene. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, to God and his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under conscious fire. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
As we wait patiently for our Lord's return, let us pray to our gracious God on behalf of the whole church and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God and Father, give your holy church throughout the world your grace to serve you with reverence and awe, granting us faith to endure to the end. In your good time, grant a senior pastor to this community of the faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the mouths of the pastors in our circuit, district, and synod, and give them the words to testify to your love in Christ Jesus and the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know all our anxieties and fears. Grant to those troubled in mind and spirit the strength to cast every care on you. According to your will, give them quietness of heart and a firm trust in the mercy you have shown us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Place the lonely in the family of your holy church, O Lord, that they may find peace in Christ and fulfillment in loving service to their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the face of natural disasters, wars, famines, and troubles of all kinds, fill our hearts with repentance and humility, that in every circumstance we may trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look with favor on all who are in need. Fill the hungry with good things. Give the poor and unemployed gainful employment. Heal the sick, especially Fran. Prepare Pammy with your mercy for her upcoming surgery. Be near the dying. Give courage to those who suffer oppression and want. Defend all orphans and widows, and protect the weak, the unborn, and the aged. Lord, in your mercy, make each communicant worthy to receive Christ's body and blood this day, that they would do so with a repentant heart and in faith, not to their judgment, but for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the family of Reverend Trevor Mankins, pastor of elect of Town and Country Lutheran Church. On the coming path, on the sudden passing of his father, Clarence, in that act we see the signs of our Lord's second coming. Grant that we would not lose heart, but be faithful unto death and receive the crown of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
gives thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glory evermore praising you and singing. But deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.